1962 test of the nuclear ASROC by Joint Task Force 8 provided an underwater effects test of the nuclear ASROC anti-submarine weapons system. On 12 January 1962, Task Force 8 Commander, Major General Starbird, was directed to include the ASROC in the nuclear test program. He immediately designated the Navy task group of the force to plan and conduct the test under his direction. Less than three months later, service ASROC missiles with nuclear warheads were taken aboard the designated firing ship, the destroyer Agarholm, and her backup, the destroyer Richard B. Anderson, and were stowed in their launchers by the ship's regular ASROC crews. Test conditions posed potential radiological dangers. To reduce the seriousness of these hazards, careful consideration was given to rad safe measures to protect men, ships, and equipment from possible contamination. Intensive preparation stressed the most advanced safety and protective measures. Following tests and training operations off San Diego, the ASROC Task Group, designated Joint Task Group 8.9, sailed on May 6th for final rehearsals and firing. Their rendezvous was at the designated firing point in the Pacific, some 370 miles southwest of San Diego. In the test area, final instrumentation preparations were made for recording data on the ASROC burst effects, both under sea and above it. Many of the devices had been especially designed for this operation. They were set up and monitored by scientists and technicians from many Navy laboratories, as well as from laboratories of the AEC and other civilian agencies. This operation used the skills of men from many sources, men working in units that had been rapidly assembled to meet the demands of the test. On every ship, men bent to their tasks. Here once again was proof that an effective force for a complex mission can be put together quickly and efficiently. After completion of the Polaris test some 1,200 miles to the southwest, Rear Admiral Muston, the Navy Task Group Commander, joined up with Yorktown and its escorting destroyers. This brought the task group to its full operational strength of more than 6,000 men. Admiral Muston shifted his flag from Yorktown to the Monticello. On 11 May 1962, all was in place and ready. Weather forecast indicated conditions suitable for test. Starting at first light of dawn, the Monticello began the critical task of streaming the five-mile-long instrumented array. Superb seamanship was the vital factor as the various units of the array moved out across the water. The target raft that would mark surface zero, the platform from which recording devices would be hung to gather information from 2,000 feet below the surface of the sea, and the instrumented coracles. These were only a part of the instrumentation used in recording the ASROC effects, but they provided a particularly important body of information. Leaving the ship, they were strung together like beads on an unsinkable polypropylene line. Also part of the array was the destroyer Bossell, which would be evacuated by her crew for these tests. She was used to measure and demonstrate the effects of the nuclear burst and its radioactive base surge on a representative fleet combatant ship type armed with the ASROC weapon. Well before H hour, the target and instrumented array were streamed and headed into the wind. As shot time neared, Yorktown aircraft maintained surveillance of the test area for both safety and security of the test. They were backed up by appropriately stationed destroyers of the task group. With the array in position, the instrumented ships of the task group moved out to their stations. 4,000 yards from surface zero, the submarine Razorback submerged to periscope depth. Staff members and civilian scientists from various ships shifted to Agarholm, which would fire the ASROC missile. 
The Monticello's boats evacuated all hands from Boss Cell and the target platforms. As H hour approached, conditions for observation of the test were excellent. At surface zero, a plume of smoke marked the target position. On the bridge of the firing ship, Captain Siebert checked his assigned position. Ships went to general quarters. All hands were alert. Everything was ready. In the torpedo room of Razorback, special technical gear was readied for launching to gather information on the coming detonation. At H minus 30 seconds, the countdown was shifted from time control to a heavily instrumented A3D photo aircraft flying at 20,000 feet on a track to pass directly over the target. This shift of countdown control was to permit the plane to be vertically above the target at the instant of detonation. Aboard Agar Home, the ASROC launcher lined up on target. The rocket propelled ASROC headed toward target. In the foreground is the firing ship. At this point, the service fuse completed the firing cycle and the burst exploded skyward. As the burst fell back, the base surge formed. A heavily radioactive cloud of spray and mist which spread to nearly one mile in radius. A few seconds later, the detonation bubble collapsed. This caused a new plume to be thrust upward through the primary cloud. The cloud approached Bossel but did not cover her. These views were from the destroyer Preston. Other observers had different views. This is how the burst and shock wave looked from the A3D photo aircraft flying at 20,000 feet directly overhead. The technical photography from this portion has proved to be a particularly valuable source of information. And this is how it looked from another of the technical photography aircraft. An R5D flying at 10,000 feet, six and a half miles on a direct line from surface zero. Performance of the 120 cameras used to cover the different technical aspects of this test was considered perfect. As the base surge spread to its full size, it began to drift downwind, a feature which has to be taken into careful account in tactical use of this weapon. Here is another look at the burst from the angle of a low-flying Yorktown helicopter. And this impressive view of the shock wave spreading across the water was seen by the crew of another helicopter. Beneath the sea, the crew of Razorback experienced the effects of the shock wave in a strong shaking that lasted for 45 seconds. The ASROC nuclear effects and weapons system test was an outstanding success from both the technical and the operational point of view. From the recordings gathered by hundreds of devices which function precisely as planned, the project scientists will extract unprecedented amounts of vital data. In the words of one scientist, possibly more data from this one test alone 
than from the total of all previous underwater tests. And the operating forces of the Navy have gained the information needed for proper and full tactical use of this vital anti-submarine weapons system. Thank <laughs> you.